I just told you a little while ago, these leaders that they call leaders, this included <laughs> Lena Horne, this included Dick Gregory, and this included comedians, comics, trumpet players, baseball players. Show me in the white community where a comedian is a white leader. Show me in the white community where a singer is a white leader, or a dancer or a trumpet player is a white leader. These aren't leaders. These are puppets and clowns that uh, have been set up over the white community and or over the black community by the white community and have been made celebrities and usually say exactly what uh, they know that the white man wants to hear. Hey, welcome back. It's your man Wise. And yes, we got to talk about it, man. We got to talk about it. Hey, what do they say? A, a, a dead clock's right twice a day? <laughs> Charlemagne the Fraud, Charlemagne the Devil, Charlemagne the Shield, whatever you want to call that guy. I don't normally agree with him, but I 1000% agree with him here. And it's unfortunate because you got people out here like Plies and, and Luke and all these other guys shilling for Kamala Harris. I don't understand why. Why do they why do they not want this lady treated no different than any other person that would be running for president? Here we are well over a month into her candidacy, and she still has yet to sit down with any serious journalists. Now, she did sit down quickly or briefly. Or I don't know if you want to call it sit down, but she did do a softball interview with Steve Harvey and she did a softball interview uh, with the Indian lady. But for whatever reason, black people are not allowed to ask her any questions, not allowed to hold her accountable, not allowed to look at her like someone who actually wants to earn our vote. We're going to get into it, man. Like, share, subscribe to the channel. Drop me a comment down below. I appreciate all the love and support. And without further ado, let's go. Great to see you. Hi, guys. I am here with Vice President Kamala Harris at the Democratic National Convention. I am so honored to be here. Thank you. I'm glad Thank to you be so you. much for speaking with me. Of course. And a little fun fact, uh -huh. my last name is Gopalan. I know. Which I know. is your mom's last name. Yes, it is. And, um, you know, I grew up going to India in the summers, and I know you did that as well when yep. you were young. We used to go in the fall, though. In the fall, yeah, yeah, yeah when it's not yeah, so hot. Yeah. Uh -huh. And I wanted to kind of hear from you what your fondest, like, memories were from then. Well, some of my fondest memories are with my grandfather. You know, it's funny because um, Kamala, Kamala in Indian is Lotus. Yes, and And Kamala in America is POTUS. So <laughs> Lotus for POTUS. You see that? <laughs> you see that? All right, let's keep it moving. Let's keep it moving. Let's go. But to everybody who, especially the ones who who, who, who look like me and the, the, the men who look like me, who quit the, ah, uh, she, if she Kamala want my vote, she need to explain herself to me what she going to do for the black people. Listen, stop asking a black woman to explain herself to you or explain herself to y'all. If y'all ain't willing to ask a white man, this mother explain his stuff. Y'all cool with the white man not explaining his stuff, his mother stuff to you. Oh, the mother black, she need to explain herself to me what she gonna do for the black community. She want my vote. She need to explain herself. You ain't mother the white man explain himself. You too mother scared, I him. Somebody need to explain something to y'all. Well, she, she been in the office already three and a half years. Why, why she ain't do all the things she said she was gonna do? Cause she ain't the president. That's why. Plies is absolutely before he, before Charlemagne goes, this guy here is a clown. He's a goofy. Point blank, period. Show us or tell us that you've been paid to shield for this lady. So black people are not allowed to ask a political candidate about what she planned on doing for the black for the black community, or hell, what she plans on doing for the United States of America because we hadn't heard anything yet. You go to her website, she doesn't have policies on her, on her website. And when you compare that to Trump, Trump's all over the place. He went over to the NABJ. It was super hostile. They did not really want him there. Uh, so much so that a lady had to dag on, resign from the presidency there. And even then, it wasn't a serious interview. It wasn't an interview with good faith. So the one opportunity that black people did have to really sit down and speak with Donald Trump, they, they fumbled the bag. On the flip side of that, 
Trump's been everywhere. Like I said, this dude is on streams. He's on podcasts. I mean, this dude is doing town halls. He's multiple press conferences, multiple interviews one-on-one with all types of people. He just did an interview the other day with Sean Ryan. Dude is all over the place. Kamala Harris has refused to sit down with anybody serious. She allowed Steve Harvey to lob some softballs at her. She obviously went to whoever these, you know, Indian folks are and, you know, did a little soft cream puff, you know, uh, uh, meet and greet with them, but nothing of substance. But the fact that you have people out here like Plies telling black people and telling Americans, period, that we don't have the right to ask any questions of someone who expects our vote. This is the Democrat Party here. They almost demand our vote. But we don't have rights to ask. We don't have the right to ask any questions. It's people like him that are the problem. It's people like him that Malcolm X was talking about 70, 80 years ago. It's people just like this fool here. Why she ain't do all the things she said she was going to do? Because she ain't the president. That's why. Plies is, Plies is absolutely positively wrong. If people are asking questions, that's great. I don't even know why Plies is making this a black woman versus black man thing. This isn't about black men and black women. It's about elected officials and potential voters. The whole point of campaign season is for candidates to go out there and explain to the American people why they should be the one in charge of this country. Votes are earned, not given. And they are earned through you going out there and explaining yourself. Vice President Kamala Harris has to go out there and explain her agenda and why she's the person for the job. Former President Donald Trump has to go out there and explain his agenda and why he should be the person to get his job again, you know, or get the job again. I don't understand plies or any black person, for that matter, telling black people to just settle. Just accept whatever the candidate is giving you. Don't ask any questions. Yeah, but just they've vote. Been doing it. They've they don't been doing have it for to explain long, anything to us. They've been doing no. it for a long time. Man, even with, with Biden, when, when we ask questions to Biden, well, it's the best of two evils. You know what I mean? We, you got to pick one. But no, if you have questions, people should be able to ask. Listen, that, that's the point of a politician, right? They're supposed to represent us, represent our district, represent our country. Shouldn't we ask? Forget. And, and by the way, they, they should be explaining without us asking. Mm -hmm. That's the whole point of them doing these press conferences and these meetings. Yeah. The same way these politicians have meetings for their donors and they have rallies right. and press conferences explaining themselves and their agendas to certain groups, they should have to explain themselves to black people the same way. Plies is a billion percent wrong. Like I said, I don't necessarily agree with Charlemagne the Fraud all the time, but this one right here, he's absolutely right. He is absolutely right. What Charlemagne is saying is treat the black voters no different than you treat everybody else. But see, the thing is, is that we've been voting for Democrats at a 90 plus percent clip for so long. They take us for granted. Now that we're actually demanding that you come speak to us. Now that we're actually demanding that you hear what we have to say. They don't understand how to take it. You see, the black community, when it comes to the Democrats, you know, it's like the, uh, uh, the, the, the spouse of the cheating husband who always cheats and, and, they, and the spouse just takes them back and, you know, the dude lies and whispers sweets nothing and the spouse just always takes them back until finally they get fed up and say, hex no, no more. And that person doesn't really know how to handle it. That's the Democrat Party right now. That's the Democrat Party right now because they don't understand how to deal with the community who is no longer just voting blue no matter who at a 90% clip. Obviously, there are still a whole heck of a lot of people that are going to support this lady, and they're going to support because she's a Democrat. They're going to support her because they think she's black. And you got a lot of women out there that's going to support her solely because she's a woman and they feel like we pass due. But again, I'm going to keep harping on this until things change. If you are one of those people out here who think that women are equal, who think that women are just as smart, just as strong, just as capable of leadership. You should be out here screaming from the rooftops that this lady be treated the same as any other man out there that would be running for president right now. There is no man that would be running for president for over a month and had not sat down and spoke to the daggone press. It just would not happen. She's been the vice president for three and a half years, going on four years now. So it's not a situation where she's just some new person that just got tossed into this. She's been into this. 
She been here. I don't understand why these people are trying to give this lady the benefit of the doubt. Like she just came out of nowhere. She was a part of the, she's a part of the current administration. And now she has an opportunity to become president. Y'all should be clamoring for her. Y'all should be screaming that she be treated the same way. And she take on the challenge. No different than anybody else. We are 72 days away from November 5th, right? Charlemagne the God, Jermaine Dupree. This is what you're doing. This is what I want you to do. Let's chit chat. I promise you, I will never understand the addiction to being intentionally ignorant. Please, let's talk about what we know. On July 21st, Joe Biden dropped out of the race for president, meaning that Kamala Harris joined the presidential race with only 113 days until election day. Some of y'all don't understand how the three branches of government work, so please let me explain to you why her entering the race with only 113 days to win an election is really unheard of. During Donald Trump's 2016 run for presidency, he launched his campaign 513 days before election day. 2008, Obama launched his campaign 633 days before election day. The year 2000, George W. Bush launched his campaign 514 days before the election and Al Gore launched his campaign 501 days before the election. And in all of that, inside of those 113 days, the Harris Walls campaign has broken a myriad of records they are doing the work they are laying out their plan rallying behind this amazing campaign that is truly running against not just Donald Trump but project 2025 certain black men have decided to use their platforms to create divisiveness as Plies pointed out there is a huge difference between wanting to know your candidates strategy for the first 100 days in office what they are going to do for you and holding them to a standard that you don't hold politicians who are not of color. You have Charlemagne the guy. Now, did Plies lace his point with a bunch of MFers? Absolutely. Did he lay it out eloquently? Also, absolutely. So for Charlemagne the God's takeaway from Plies to be that Plies is telling black people to just take any candidate that's given to them and to settle is truly, well, willfully ignorant. Now you do whatever you want to do with your but I'm not voting for no mother rich white man to be able to do whatever the f you want to do. I'm just not doing it. Hmm. Then what are you voting for? Is Kamala Harris not a rich woman married to a rich white man? <laughs> like, what are y'all talking about? Not to mention, not to mention, I understand all these folks had three, four, 500 days uh, when they launched their campaign up into election day. But that's no one's fault but the DNC. So be upset with the DNC that they placed her in this position. But due to the fact that she launched with 100 days or a little more than 100 days left or remaining before the election, that's even more of a reason to be out there really speaking to the people. That's even more of a reason to get out there and do town halls, do press conferences and get in front of some of these uh, reporters out there to get your message and your word out to the people. Everybody not going to these rallies. Everybody not going to these rallies and these rallies aren't televised. A lot of folks aren't going to the rallies at all. So that's even more of a reason to go get on some of these mainstream media platforms that have a much further reach than a singular, than a singular rally you know, in one location out in Philadelphia or out in Wisconsin, some daggone where. I mean, come on, man. And what's up with the excuses? What is up with the excuses? I just don't understand these people, man. I don't hate them women that much. And I damn. And why does this dude sound like this? I sure don't hate a black woman that much. So you can vote for a mother KK, or you can vote for the mother KKK. You vote for whatever K you want a mother vote for. What is this? dude talking about golly man the buffoonery is on 10 that's your motherfucking business ah she don't ever talk about her then yes she do you just don't want a mother here that lady told you she trying to get twenty five thousand dollars trying to buy a home what twenty five thousand is going to twenty five thousand dollars going to do for a home price right now when the average median household a uh, household a uh, house the average median uh, uh home price is four hundred thousand what is twenty five thousand dollars going to do and that's for first time buyers. Trying to build three more mother million homes. Trying to lower the drug prices for everybody, not just the elderly. 
trying to get tax cut to the middle of the class. That's like trying to no. She ain't giving no tax cuts to the middle class, bro. No tax on tips or whatever the hell it is. That lady telling Stole you what she trying Trump. to mother. You just don't want a mother. He Malcolm X, he warned you of these types of people. He warned you of those types of people. It's people like Plies that will sell his own folks out, sell the country out for a few trinkets, small bag of silver. These people are, are just, just disgusting. They really are. I mean, I, I realize that there are countervailing strategies often in terms of when you sit a candidate down with the news media. Uh, sometimes it can be counterproductive ahead of a convention, for example. But on the other hand, if you let it go on too long, it can get out of your control. I think you're right. And that's also why her campaign has said that it's going to happen um, before the end of next month. And I think that that's very important. Be mindful. The DNC just ended last week. She was just became the official nominee on Friday. On top of that, we also saw that, you know, with the roll call, which was just a few days prior, um, the virtual roll call, that vote came through. This is something where we've had Kamala Harris atop the ticket um, officially for just a few days. So this is not this is a very this is such BS. This is such BS. And women like her, caping, want to talk about black women, but don't want to look like one. This is ridiculous, man. It's flat out ridiculous, man. And the thing is, is that if, if the inverse was the case, they would be up in arms because Trump won't speak to anybody. You know it, I know it historic campaign, a very truncated campaign, but the pressure for her was to actually get out and talk to the voters. She's been doing that. She had to build that capacity. She also just chose her vice presidential, uh, her vice president as a running hang mate. Hang on, hang okay. on. The she's, press she's was not her top back. priority. We're talking about the vice president of the United States. She's been preparing to be president for allegedly for she's three and a half years. She's also been doing a lot of interviews so, as vice so, president. So how, therefore, she should have been able to do an interview on the first day. Why isn't it's she? Not, not? It's not a question of ability. It is one of campaign measuring no, it's one, the value she of how, she, how much she needs to she be out doesn't want to answer for the, the fact that she she was against fracking, she She's was against private insurance, in ways she was that against Joe Biden gasoline not. cars. And she, she doesn't want to talk where about they are it. And having those conversations every day. She, she She's doesn't, talking about it to the people who actually cast talk votes about in November. She, oh, let me push pause because, Mark, I will say that she this has been something that that people the, people behind the scenes will acknowledge is something mm -hmm. that is not her top strength. These unscripted moments where she's under pressure from interviewers. If it was the, her strongest. If it was her strongest move, they would have played it already. Oh, they would have played it, no question. Look, at, uh, I hate to play the middle here, but they're both right. I mean, Misha and Brad, you're both right in the sense that right now they don't have to do the interview. There isn't enough public pressure for them to do it. But we are seeing these interviews start to pop up more and more, and then the question arises. I think the public pressure is building up for the interview. I, I, no, but I think it is. But remember, this is the first week back to school for a lot of schools, certainly in the Northeast. Well, you, you know, kids are just back in the South right now, but people are finishing she, 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 she is able to enjoy the cover of summer right now. But she's shawled off one third of this campaign and members of the news media have let her. She's not she's not answering questions about we know her position. She's against fracking. She's against private health insurance. She's against gasoline cars. That's what she told us when she ran for president last time. She doesn't want to talk about those positions. That's why she's stalling. And it. she should do an interview. I'm just politically saying, Brad, and, and you, you have to acknowledge that it and hasn't she, been that bad to uh, at she, point. And oh, she she's will do show one. Up it at, is coming. She'll show up at NPR somewhere. The fact that she will do one. And the fact that you have people like Misha over here shilling for this foolishness. No and good and well that they would be up in arms if another candidate decided to go about it this way, they know they would. And my thing is, is that I'm assuming that Misha, she may be one of those feminist, strong, you know, independent black women as well. You should want her to be treated no different than anyone else. Because to be honest with you, if this sets the precedence, if this right here sets precedence, and it's a situation to where it's like, oh, she has to be, you know, handled with kid gloves. No one can speak to her because it's not a strong suit. It sets precedent for other people to try to do this. It does. And then if she loses, they'll say, oh, they didn't want to vote for a black woman or people didn't want to vote for a woman. This, that, and the third. No, we didn't want to vote for a candidate who showed themselves weak. Because that's exactly what she's doing right now. She is showing herself as a weak candidate.
like that, but she's not going to take tough questions. on a network and she's going to have a sit down conversation. She has already said her campaign has already said that that's going to happen. If you're waiting for the it's day, a everybody month. else is waiting for it's the day. It's a month. She's actually on the ground. She's doing bus tours across the state of Georgia. She is talking to the she's voters. The, last the voters one in the are going to make it. this decision. We are going to we're going to have to take a break. I'm sorry uh, to cut you off, but uh, I, I do. I don't think that doing softball interviews is going to put this to rest. I, I, I understand the point that you're making, but I think the decision that I'm looking for from the Harris team is who are they choosing to sit down with? And is that going to be something where you come away feeling like she took the hard questions or if this you know, snowball can take? Let me know what you guys think about this, man. This is so ridiculous, man. It really is. And I'm going to keep harping on this. I'm going to keep harping on this. Because she is showing herself as a weak candidate. She is showing herself as someone that doesn't want to be treated like everyone else. And you have a lot of women out there that are caping for her who for years, decades now, they've been telling us that they're just as capable, just as strong, just as smart, just as articulate, just as intelligent. But yet you finally get someone in the position and they are showing themselves as scared and weak. And if that's her campaign's uh, strategy, it's a piss poor strategy on the flip side of that if some kind of way she wins if some kind of way she wins by not speaking to the press by not speaking to the american people directly by not putting her um policies on her website by not being transparent that situation sets precedence as well and then you will have a whole host of people that will run for president who will never speak to the american citizens about what their true intents are for this country. And that in itself, that's a problem as well. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section. Like, share, subscribe to the channel. Drop me a comment down below. I appreciate all the love and support. Consider joining the ARP family. It supports me, the team, the channel. It gives us the ability to do what we do on a day-to-day -day basis. I appreciate each person that has joined the ARP family thus far. God bless each and every one of you guys. Keep God first in your life. Stay prayed up. And I'm going to catch up with you all next time. Peace.